Good morning, folks. We've got a lot to cover here today. We'll check out space weather, some concerning weather. We'll dish out some spankings, get some eye candy, and there's an upcoming event to mention. Well, let's start with the last 24 hours on our star. Sunspots beginning to depart. The big one on the south started its goodbye kiss routine in a big impulsive flare this morning. We've got a big plasma filament taking its place in the eruption watch, and we'll look at the four bush decrease from the solar storm earlier this week. You can see here that massive sunspot is on its way out. It's almost completely out of range for Earth-directed CME production. Earlier this morning, it fired an impulsive M7 solar flare, which does not appear to have launched any CME at all. We are beginning to shift focus to the southern incoming plasma filament. This one is big and has survived quite a while on the corona. Its collapse or release would produce a CME, and we'll be watching that closely. Folks, the four bush decrease earlier this week was more than 14%. Quick reminder that this is a drop in galactic cosmic rays while the coronal mass ejection is engulfing the planet. That acts to block out particles coming from more distant regions. It was a pretty big event there, luckily short-lived. There was a phenomenal lightning outbreak in the Gulf of Mexico yesterday, an incredible surge, and one of the things we should continue to watch for as Earth's magnetic field weakens, allowing the atmosphere to become more juiced up. We also had a pretty devastating hailstorm in China. Egg-sized ice stones took out car windows and more. Two of the scarier weather impacts expected there. Three cheers for the tears of the sky sprayers. Major chemtrail study slated by Harvard has been canceled amidst pushback and uncertainty over the effects it will have on the Earth. While I imagine it's just a small hiccup in their plan, I applaud the failure to launch. Spraying the sky is a terrible idea. Yesterday, we shared this picture of a supernova that blew 800 years ago. Chandra has now broken out the wavelengths into optical, infrared, and X-ray, which are combined to produce that final image we saw yesterday. Multi-wavelength astrophotography is absolutely mesmerizing. Science lunacy alert up next. The story is circling the internet, but it is complete nonsense. Not only are the events they describe unable to change the length of a day, but Earth's rotation isn't slowing. It's unequivocally faster than most of the last century, and in fact, the fastest year on record was 2022, with several single-day records set since 2020. Earth's rotation is in fact speeding up. Last but not least, folks, the big story in astronomy yesterday was all about the magnetic fields of Sagittarius A. You might have seen it. They claim to have mapped the magnetic fields circling the galactic center and, let's just say, I'm suspicious. We will have a special video coming up on why this makes no sense, but sure is a nice trap for people like me who know that this general shape is what should exist around the central nucleus of the Milky Way, just not in this angle of observation. Lastly, folks, the private live stream for members of the Observer Review was so great last month, we're going to do it again. Our monthly e-magazine members had a great time, and we're doing it again on April 1st. Sign up for the e-magazine at the link below, and yes, if you miss the live, a replay will be sent to all Observer Review subscribers afterwards. By the way, this is the number one way you can support the Observers, and we greatly appreciate that support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.